Welcome to our fourth talk in the Tombs of the Isles talk series on passage grave art in the North Isles with Dr Antonia Thomas. If you'd like to find out more, please visit our website at archaeologyorkney.com slash Tombs of the Isles. Hello and welcome to the second talk in my series of three about passage grave art in the North Isles of Orkney as part of the Tombs of the Isles project. In the first talk, I introduced a broad overview of Neolithic art in Orkney, but in this talk I want to focus on the evidence for passage grave art from the North Isles in particular. As we have seen in previous talks in this series, 53 out of the 81 known tombs in Orkney are in the North Isles. The majority of the tombs in the North Isles of Orkney, however, are stalled cairns which take the form of rectangular cairns divided along their length by orthostats, which form stalls rather like those found in a byre. This is Midhow in Rousey, one of 15 Neolithic chambered cairns on the island, and by far the largest and the best to visit. A modern hangar protects the tomb from the elements, and you can admire the compartments or stalls from above by walkways. In shape and internal layout, this cairn is similar to some Neolithic houses, such as the Napa Hower on Papa Westry. And this is the Napa Hower. We can see here this is two houses with surviving stone cupboards and stalls. These date back to the 3rd millennium BC, contemporary with Orkney chambered tombs such as Midhow and Rousey shown on the previous slide. The two houses Houses here are the best preserved and most visible early Neolithic settlement anywhere in northwest Europe. And as we've seen in previous talks in this series, these styles, of, these styles of houses and tombs are rather different from sites such as Scarabray. Another site with houses similar to those found at Scarabray is the Links of Nortland, where the fantastically well preserved farming settlement dates from around 3300 BC right the way into uh, through the Bronze Age. Neolithic remains include a dozen buildings and even the Westry Wifey or Orkney Venus figurine. The building shown here is rather different in style to that at the Nap of Hower and here you can see a structure that is more of a rounded square, a layout and form that appears to relate to that seen in Maze Howe type tombs. While most of the tombs in the North Isles are stalled cairns, there are a few of these so-called Maze Howe type tombs. Examples include Coynus, Vincoy and others as well. I'll, I'll come back to Coynus a little later in this talk, but first I want to revisit some of the curious associations of Orcadian Neolithic architecture that we've, also, we've already seen in some of the previous talks in this series. In my previous talk, I said about how we used to assume that the Neolithic in Orkney was broadly split into two uh, time periods based on the architecture and material culture. So we once thought that the styles shown on the top row, Nap of Hower type houses, stalled cairns as seen in Yarso, which is the plan number B at the top here, and Unstant Ware pottery, were all what we called early Neolithic. Whilst the styles seen on the bottom row, Scarabray or Links of Nortland style houses, Maze Howe type tombs and grooved ware pottery all related to the later Neolithic. Now we realise now through radiocarbon dating that this idea is a bit disrupted because some of the dates for the later styles or what we thought were later styles are broadly comparable to the different styles seen in what we used to think were earlier. And so this association of different types of architecture and chronological periods doesn't quite work as well as we used to think it did. But what's interesting about this is the association of passage grave art at some of these sites throws up a lot of questions. Because the passage grave art we find in tombs, whether it's in the form of simple scratches or elaborate pet designs, has never yet at least been found at any of the stalled cairns in Orkney. It has only ever really been associated in um, the Maze Howe type tombs 
and sites with the grooved ware pottery. So this is quite a curious association that we're yet to untangle. But I would like to just think up for a minute about how we might think of different forms of art at sites which are of a different style, for example, at the stalled cairns. And there's some interesting evidence that has turned up at settlement sites, such as Green in AD and Spurkoy in St Ola, where excavations of Knapp of Hauer style houses, which we would normally associate with stalled cairns and that sort of style of architecture, have actually produced examples of pet decoration. And this sort of decoration is actually very similar to what we might expect to find in passage grave art, but within an early Neolithic house style. So very curious. There are also some indications that we should perhaps broaden our idea of what decoration and art look like in the Neolithic. Because we see on many stalled cairns, although there is not decoration in the passage grave art sense internally, there is a sense of a decorative aesthetic at work. We see evidence for this at sites such as Blackhammer, a stalled cairn in Rousey. And here is an image of it under excavation in the 1930s. When the site was excavated, way back in the early 20th century, the external stonework was found to have been laid in a herringbone-like fashion, forming a decorative scheme which is also seen at the tombs of Midhow and Yarso, also stalled cairns in Rousey. Now, some people have argued that this decorative scheme shows an association that follows through to the pottery associated with these tombs. For example, Unston Ware, with its also herringbone kind of fashion of lines uh, decorating the pots. It has even been suggested that the round tombs with this pottery may have been seen as inverted Unston ware pots. So if we see these examples, we can certainly think that there's a form of artistic referencing going on with the architecture of the stalled cairns. But it's rather different to that seen in the maze how type tombs. And interestingly, in the stalled cairns, this decorative scheme is only really seen on the outside. I'm now going to turn to some examples of maize how type tombs in the North Isles that do show forms of internal decoration that we can talk about as passage grave art. Firstly, we have coyness in Sandy. This was excavated by James Farrer, a notorious antiquarian, in the 1860s, and he found bones from around 14 or 15 individuals in some of the side cells and also some bones in a pit in the centre chamber. Now this cairn is known as a maize how type cairn due to its form. The wide stone platform surrounding the central cairn was a later addition, probably constructed later on in the Neolithic, given the presence of grooveware pottery in and around it. The site was then re-excavated and consolidated by Gordon Child in the 1950s. And this is what has led to the tomb's current appearance, which is intended to expose and kind of highlight its internal structure rather than allude to its original appearance. Inside, we have a typical maize how type cairn. But what's interesting about the internal stonework is it also shows examples of what we might consider scratch art. And this was recorded by Richard Bradley, Colin Richards and others during the survey work in the late 1990s, following on from the discovery of similar uh, scratch art in Mays Howe. On the internal walls of Coyness, there are several examples of this scratch art. They're very hard to see without specialist lighting. But they form a pattern of marking that is very similar to that seen places such as Mays Howe, but also settlements like Scarabray, and also uh, found extensively at the Nessa Brogga. The example in the photograph here on the left is also shown uh, as uh, F in the line drawing on the right. 
And although they're very hard to see, there are several examples which are definitely examples of Neolithic art. Other finds from Coinus included fragments of animal bone, pottery and bone and stone tools, along with these two carved stone objects, similar to those found at Scarabray on the Orkney mainland. These are examples which we might think of as three-dimensional portable art. But apart from the few scratches on the walls, which are very ephemeral, there's not really what we would call passage grave art in the kind of Irish sense at Coinus at all. And to look for examples of that, we have to go to some other sites. One of the largest and most interesting cairns that you can visit in Orkney also happens to have the largest collection of in situ extant pecked decoration of any site in Orkney. It's the home of Papa Westry South and this site will form the focus of my next talk which is a case study on the rock art in the tomb. It is an incredible site and you can visit by taking a charter boat over to a very small island to see it. It has an incredible collection of peck decoration inside, including motifs like this zigzag pattern and what almost looks like a sort of brogger butterfly, the stone on the left there. Other examples of decoration within the tomb include this, this lintel, which is covered in what have been known as eyebrow motifs. These arcing patterns over a series of dots that make them look like eyes and eyebrows. And you can hear more about these carvings in the next talk in this series. And here are some of the drawings showing the different types of carvings pecked into the walls of the home of Papa Westry South. And there's lots of different designs here, but you can see that overwhelmingly the patterns consist of these uh, circular meandering uh, motifs and particular kind of dots and arcs which make them look like eyes and eyebrows or spectacled patterns they're often called as well. It's a fascinating sight. But now I'm going to turn to two sites which have unfortunately been destroyed but which have given us some of the best examples of passage grave art in Orkney. Because although these examples from the home of Papa at Westry South Tomb are fascinating and a really important assemblage. They might share characteristics with some of the carvings we see in Ireland, but again, they're not really what we think of when we think of passage grave art. To see examples of those sort of carvings, sort of passage grave art that sits well within a, a scheme that's also got examples from uh, Newgrange and other sites like that in it, we need to turn to a couple of sites which have unfortunately been destroyed. The first of these is the uh, Edimance in Edi. And this is what the site looks like today. Now unfortunately, little if anything remains of this site, this cairn itself. It was destroyed in 1821 when a church, which itself is now in ruins, was constructed on the site using much of the stonework from the cairn. There were no details of the Neolithic structure at the time, in the 1820s, but a little later, around 1861, Robert Hebden, who was the landowner, pieced together a brief account from people who had seen the destruction. He said that from the description of old people, there was a long passage or room flagged over and numerous passages branching out and leading to quasi circular cells, some few of which that remained undisturbed, I have since opened. Now, according to Hebden, the exterior of the structure was around 18 metres long and 9 metres wide. It certainly sounds like the Edimants Cairn would have been one of the most impressive Neolithic structures that we have in Orkney. But unfortunately, all that remain today are a few lumps, bumps and holes across the area. A scatter of large rubble suggesting a once magnificent structure that is no longer there. Hebden's investigations 
did find a few flint flakes and also what he described as a rude clay urn that unfortunately broke up upon removal. But apart from that, he managed to find one of the most impressive pieces of passage grave art from Orkney. It is truly impressive. Now within the National Museum of Scotland, it is one of the finest examples of Neolithic art from Orkney, and one of the few examples featuring spiral and circular motifs. You can see here at the top there's spirals, but also concentric circles below. And this close-up shows just how mesmerising these carved patterns are and how they have clear parallels with the Irish passage grave art such as that found at the tomb of Newgrange. Nowadays there isn't much to see at all apart from the scatter of rubble and the ruins of the church next to it. So we're lucky that Hebden donated this wonderful carved stone to the National Museum of Antiquities in Scotland in 1861. Now the National Museum of Scotland, you can see, see the stone there today on display. Visiting the sites in 18, uh, 1983, Audrey Henshaw suggested that the cairn would have been around 37 metres by 17 metres, much larger than in Hebden's account. We will never know whether there were other stones, decorated stones from the cairn, and it may well be that they were reused or smashed up to be built into the, the church that still stands there ruined today. Hebden described the decorated stone as lying on its face just at the entrance of one of the passages where the quarrying had stopped. It appeared to have been split for a lintel and probably the other half answers that purpose in the church. Poking around the ruins of the church nowadays it's very hard to see the remnants of any carvings anywhere, even though lots of people have had a good look. There have been some suggestions that there are the faint, faint traces of decoration on some of the stones in the church, but none are really that clear, and they may well be examples of natural weathering. The next example I'm going to briefly look at today is another site which has sadly been destroyed. This is the site of Peerwall Quarry, which was recognised as having archaeological importance in 1981 when a quarry was being um, extended and uh, stripped. At that time, limited excavation showed that there was a mound comprising of domestic structures and middens uh, which were from the Iron Age, which had destroyed all but the lowest metre or so of an underlying Neolithic cairn. There's certainly nothing remaining of the Neolithic structure today. But for what is really exciting is that the site produced three large decorated stone. From, these were recovered from quarry dumps. Two of the examples are shown here. You can see that they've got these fantastic horned spiral decorations really unusual for Orkney and very much in line with the sort of decoration we might expect to see in passage grave art found in Ireland. The finest example from the site is truly impressive and would not look out of place at Newgrange. It's incredible and even though it was split in two pieces, it's certainly the finest example of passage grave art that we have in Orkney. It was found at the entrance to a passage and is thought to have originally been a lintel. It's absolutely beautiful, decorated in concentric circles and spirals. It's interesting that out of all of these examples, and out of all of the examples of Neolithic art found in Orkney at all, the examples which most closely link in terms of style and execution to passage grave art found in Ireland are these examples from the North Isles of Orkney. And in fact, it's this stone from Westry and also the example from Edie Mance, which seem to have the closest stylistic connection to the artwork found in the Boyne Valley of Ireland, perhaps suggesting some closer links in the past than we might have thought of. 
And that brings me to the end of this uh, short talk about passage grave art in the North Isles of Orkney, where I focus just on a few sites and some of the best examples that we have. I hope you'll join me for the next talk in this series, where I'll be offering a case study which looks at the rock art found within the Homer Papa Westry South tomb in particular. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this talk on passage grave art in the North Isles with Dr Antonia Thomas and would like to join us for the next talk where she talks about rock art in the home of Papa Westry South tomb.